Hey, uh, last episode I told you that I had a new plan for half episodes, and we'll get into that after these updates. December 5th, 2006. Treasure Trails got an expansion, adding emote clues. A mysterious and shifty purple-robed man named Yuri. If we follow his instructions carefully, he'll help us towards our next step. But beware of double agents. This update brought out a ton of new rewards, including the mega-rare Clue Scroll loot table, which to this day are staples in both games. Moving on to the new year, January 4th, 2007. Barbarian Assaults, a unique role-based team minigame, has you along with four other adventurers defending the Barbarian Outpost from ten waves of new monsters, the Penance. Led and spawned by their leader, the Penance Queen. Whether you're attacking the fighters or rangers, defending from the runners, collecting the dropped eggs, or healing your team and poisoning the enemy healers, strategy and timing is important. With each penance gaining complete immunity to what they were previously vulnerable to every 30 seconds, it requires every member of the party to be on their toes. Completing this minigame with high marks rewards players with powerful and unique items and loot. On the same day, the game's necklace is improved to allow a teleport to the barbarian outpost where the minigame is housed. February 12, 2007. A brand new solo thieving minigame is added, The Sorceress's Garden. Players with a minimum thieving level can travel through four different gardens, each representing its own season, to loot herbs or the new squirk fruit that makes a delicious juice that the spymaster of al Karid happens to be willing to pay handsomely for. Gaining access to the garden will be difficult, however, as only the sorcerer and her compatriots can enter. It's time to reveal the plan. I've realized that the half episodes are rather inconsistent in length and volume. That's not entirely my fault, as sometimes the games don't have a ton of content to explore, but I found a way to make up for that. Seal points. Or seal EPs, as I like to call them. Now, as silly and as dumb as that sounds and is, stick with me here. Let me explain. We need to earn 100 seal points in order to complete the episode. Here's how I'm going to be earning seal EPs. There's three ways to get them. First, for each update that we've unlocked in this episode that we do, we earn four seal points. For example, if a new agility course is added and we complete it, we earn four seal EPs. The next way to earn points is to unlock unique items. This is worth 10 seal EPs. A unique item is anything in a collection log. For example, the dragon chain body or an abyssal whip would earn us 10 points each the first time we get them, and only the first time. Finally, we can earn seal EPs through leveling skills. Leveling any skill is worth one seal point. All right, enough explaining, let's get earning. Let's start with doing some clue scrolls and seeing if we can get any of the cool new emote ones. For those of you who have been around a while, you've probably already seen me do one of these, but it's actually for real this time. The rules are the same, of course. Any clue that requires an item or area that we haven't unlocked, I have to drop the clue. Oh, wow. That was quick. Gotta make the legs, which requires 66 smithing, though we only have 65. Dwarven stout from the Falador bar for the boost to 66. Nice. A double agent! Easy. Thank you, Yuri, for the next step. And that's our first four Sealy Peas. This one's in the Scorpion Wizard Tower. Our Doyen. Oops, need a spade. This one's in User by the Golem. Okay, Clue Scroll complete. And we get Mystic Earth Staff, some Alcables, and some runes. I'll take it. First hard clue on RS3 release completed. Is the Mystic Earth Staff a collection log item? Mm, nope. Let's find out about the Sorceress's Garden. On the southern end of Al Karid is a home, sort of secluded from the rest of the city. We talked to the woman who's inside sweeping. She says she's an apprentice to Adila, the sorceress who lives here. She says all she has her doing is cleaning here in the garden. We ask what garden? And she realizes she made a mistake. We offer to listen to her frustrations, and she mentions that the garden is compressed into a space in this home. The only spell the sorceress has taught her is how to access the garden. We ask her to cast a spell on us, but she says she's too busy sweeping. We go to Osman, the spy master of Al-Karid. We ask if he needs help with anything. He asks us to get some squirk juice. We ask him where to get it from. He says the sorceress grows them. She used to be a friend of al -Karid, but apparently they're not on speaking terms anymore. We ask him what's special about squirk juice. He says it improves light fingers and fleet feet, and comes in four different colors. Also, they're addictive. He says in return for giving him the juice, he'll teach us more about thieving. We go back to the home and speak with the sorceress. We ask her for some squirks. She asks why, and we're compelled to tell her the truth. She says no. 
We talk to the apprentice again and ask her to cast a spell on us. This time, she does. We find ourselves in a beautiful garden. We have had enough thieving to enter the Garden of Autumn. First try, two, and three. We go to Faladol real quick and buy a Wizard's Mind Bomb, drink it, and squeeze the squirks into the empty glass. We deliver it to Osman, and he rewards us with 2,350 thieving XP. That brings us to eight Sealy Peas. Let's go do some Slayer. We got this black mask a little while ago, but we haven't really used it. Oh hey, we can use this new teleport. 12 seal points. It counts! Fire giants. Need to kill 140 of them. We've had this task for so long- What? Longbow. That's pretty rare. 1 in 400. Level 71 attack. 59 slayer. Task complete. 136 trolls. <laughs> Done. Taras. Task complete. Harpy Swarms. Done. Boring task. Next. Oh man. We were doing so well on gaining points. Wow. It finally happened. The lame task that we have to do. For those of you who missed it when I said this a while ago, any task we can't do due to our restrictions, we have to reset at Turiel. However, he assigns a single monster that we haven't unlocked, Gelatinous Abominations. It'd be really dumb to lock ourselves out of Slayer, so we're just gonna do it since there's no real benefit to killing these guys. Alright, let's try again. Finally! Something weak to crossbows. Level 60 Slayer. 63 ranged. Good task. Ooh, Cave Horse. Another great task. Alrighty, I have some AFKing to do, so we're gonna catch some sharks for a bit. There's an item that we've unlocked a couple episodes ago that we haven't gotten yet that's pivotal to our success. Here we are. We need the tail of one of these kebits. Maybe this one? Nice. Check this out. One inventory slot saved. Okay, didn't even get one level, but we got a bunch of raw sharks now for when we get 80 cooking. So we just got 60 Slayer, and it's time to use it on the monster we just unlocked, Aberrant Spectres. These guys are amazing for us. They drop noted herbs. When using our Salamander on our newly enhanced Salve Amulet, we have 100% accuracy. They have two collection log items, the Lava Battle Staff, and Dark Mystic Robe Bottoms. Uh, Make that three collection log items? The Deployable Herb Burner. We can't use it for eight years, but I'll take the Sealy Peas. 77 HP and 64 ranged. There it is. Lava Battle Staff added to the collection log. Um, okay, I guess. Apparently, they had four collection log items. 65 ranged. First strip done, we got such a nice haul. One of the great things is that these guys actually dropped the ingredients for the ammo we're using. 66 range. No way. These guys are just overflowing with unusable collection log items. The Ectoplasmator. We can use that in five years. And there it is. Dark Mystic Robe Bottoms. Pretty much right on drop rate, too. 67 ranged. 68. <laughs> and there we are, 70 ranged. 1500 total level and 73 Sealy Peas. According to the Slayer log, that's four shy of 1300 kills, and we have a ton of Herblore XP bank now. Goodbye, my friendly red salamander. You served us well. So, why don't we just spend all that time to get just 70 ranged? I'll show you in a minute. I have to AFK some more. 77 cooking, 78, 79, and that will be 80 cooking. Now we can get as many cook sharks as we can catch. So anyway, the reason we got 70 range is we have a date with a queen. We've only killed her one time, so we gotta get that number up. Maybe even getting a unique drop from her. Oh yeah, this is gonna be way smoother than last time. Wow, more potato cactus. 100 rune arrows. A break from KQ for a bit, we have a problem I need to discuss with you. Bill, the sawmill operator north of Varrock, is no longer here, and neither is the sawmill. And that's a problem, because now the sawmill is ran like... so. Free of charge. 
Unfortunately, we have no alternatives to make planks until we either complete Dream Mentor and get 86 magic for the Lunar Spell, or we complete Plague's End. The Sawmill Operator still exists, but we have to do a quest in this area to unlock him. That's not an option. Instead, I think the compromise is we use this and the bank nearby to simulate the amount of time it would have taken to walk back and forth between Varrock's bank and simply drop the gold that we would have paid. I hope everyone thinks that's fair. We have 1,867 teak logs, and we're going to process all of them for 933,500 gold, which I'm going to drop over to my main account later. Also, apparently this gives construction XP, but it's a pretty small amount. We were really close to 51, so ding, drop the money over. All paid for. 52 construction, almost finished. All right, all done. I decided that I'm not going to do this method again after this episode because we're going to complete Dream Enter in the next episode, so we're going to be forced to use Plank Make until we complete Plague's End. Meaning in the next episode, we're going to have to grind out some magic levels. But for now, let's use these planks. We need level 61. Just going to teleport in, make teak tables, use the portal to Canifis, and repeat. 53 construction. 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. We need a tiny bit more to get to level 61, so for this we're just going to saw some mahogany planks, drop 90,000 gold, and now we need a plus 3 construction boost. So we're back in Evil Dave's mom's basement with Helea. Back in our house, we get 61 construction real quick. Then we take a trip to Keldegrim's construction shop and spend way, way, way too much money on two gold leaves. Ouch. Now we need a plus three boost to go with our crystal saw that King Narnode gave us that provides a plus three boost as well, totaling plus six. Oh yeah, we need to grab some super restores. Unlucky. That's a 25% chance. There we go. Teak shelves two built. Next, we build a fancy range, go back to Keldegrim and spend another $130,000 on a gold leaf, then we make a nice sink, and finally we use all of that to make some delicious tea out of a gilded cup. And I made the wrong one! Dang it! Well, another trip to Keldegrim, and another 130000 gold later, we have our Mahogany Eagle Lantern. Now we can make teleport to house tablets. Needed some law runes, so we got 56 runecraft. Let's tune our final two portals to Varrock and Camelot. Next, we need soft clay. The clay mining situation is kind of weird because there's only about three remaining clay rocks from back in 2007, but we'll make do. We mine a full inventory in the crafting guild, soften them in the sink nearby, teleport to our house, and then turn them all into teleport to house tablets, and finally bank in Falador, then repeat. Wait a minute, we don't even need a bank. Let's move our house to Remington. There we go. Also, this is way overdue. Nice. There we go, a nice amount of teleport to house tablets. Now we can come here even when we're on a different spellbook, and more importantly, we only need a single inventory slot to teleport. Refill our prayer, and teleport to any of these three places. Had to do some fishing, got 79 fishing and 81 cooking. Well, that's 10 total kill count, and I gotta tell you, these kills are slow and miserable. Let's try our hand at some more clue scrolls. First step was easy, and nice, we can do this one too. Does this place exist yet? I have no idea when this was added. Oh wow, this has been here since RuneScape Classic. Ooh, a coordinate clue. Oh yeah, now we need to get the navigation tools. So I, I tried to get the watch, the sextant, and the chart from all three NPCs that give them, but they won't give them to me anymore. I double checked the bank and make sure I didn't have any of them. I guess they're not obtainable anymore now that they automatically come with a tool belt. Well, anyway, we can do this clue. Let's dig right here and fight the Saradoan wizard. We've done this step before. Okay, that's our second hard casket. All right, that's two collection log slots, putting us way over on our CLP goal of 100. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, consider giving the video a like. It really helps the channel grow. If you're not subscribed yet, why not try it out? 
Next episode will be the one I've been grinding towards for over a year. It's going to be the last part of the game before the schism. Don't miss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you for episode 20.